Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today we are going to speak about liberals in Europe and a Democrat in USA. Now usually I don't like to speak about politics. It's not really my uh, uh, my uh, interest, but you know you have to. Uh, you live in this earth and this earth is dirty. Uh, you know, I mentioned before that me as a as an immigrant when I came to the state everybody advised me to join the Liberals Party you know you became a citizen and you have the right to vote and etc and uh, you know everybody around me from those who they are Middle Eastern like me uh, they joined the Democrat Party <clears throat> and they explained to me why I mean the Democrat is the one who fight for immigrant isn't it obvious so you should join them and you know, in the beginning, I don't know really much about USA, and I do not know about the politics of this country that much. But by time, I did not join anything. I don't like to join something I do not know what it is. I'm not stupid, you know, just to jump inside a box. When the box is <clears throat> is dark and there's no light inside, I need to know first where I'm jumping. So I did not join neither party. And it took me some time, you know, to make my decision about which which party is the one can be good for me at least, uh, or it uh, you know, um, it have a good ideas. Let us say, can benefit me and American in general. And by time I learned that Democrat Party is nothing but. A betrayal to America you see I am an immigrant and they claim that they defend immigrant I find that this this uh, this uh, this party is offending me as an immigrant it's used me as an immigrant it's fooled me as an immigrant and it make me like a toy in their hand as an immigrant so they say to you okay well you are an immigrant uh, we will give you uh, citizenship very fast uh, we will give you a green card even if you are not legal just vote for us you know so they are not really doing anything good for you. They are using you at the end of the day. They don't really care for you. They don't. They want you to be their toy. I don't want to use a dirty word to say sex toy. You know, they 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 insert you wherever they like. And this is the truth. In the front of us, this is a CNN. <clears throat> and imagine in the CNN, they have no shame. To speak about this judge comparing him to the sex scandal of uh, of Clinton, but remember, the CNN and all the liberals during the sex uh, scandal of uh, Clinton, <laughs> they did not say or mention that he is not qualified no more to be a president. And not only that, actually, they vote for him again, and they made him win the presidency for the second time. I mean, this guy is conv convicted sex offender. Convicted of cheating, of taking false oath in the front of the court, and this is a crime by itself. You see, if you are a person who do that and you are just a normal citizen, you go to jail for five years, maybe at least two years. But when you are a Clinton, I mean, you can take a false oath and you don't go to jail. I mean, you don't. Who care? But try, try to give false information to the FBI and see what will happen to you five years in jail if you have a good lawyer you will stay there for two years so if you are a person who is in power and if you are a democrat and because they are very fair people they were able to make this person after all the accusation of rape not only by the way uh, uh, story of monica lewinsky i mean this guy is a disgusting filthy idiot and obviously he have no shame he was sitting in the in the, in the white house uh, you know just having sex and with who with the employees and one of them expose him obviously she is uh, she is uh, she is a uh, <laughs> she is a bad woman like him you know she is no better you know a woman she sleep with a, a man he is married obviously she is a bad woman don't you agree i do not need to ex examine her whoever she is you know i mean the guy is married Whoever his wife, even is if his wife is Hillary Clinton, still she is his wife. So a woman she sleep with a man who is married, 
and a man who sleep with other women and he is married and he is a president and he is the best example for the nation and then this nation stupid nation they vote for him again and make him a president but then we find a guy who is supposedly is going to be <clears throat> or he is uh, uh, what uh, Trump he chose to be a judge for the Supreme Court suddenly this guy is not a qualified why because there is a woman she said that 30 36 years ago this guy he tried to rape her and if you see the the, <clears throat> the drama in the TV and all the madness and the stupidity it's amazing I mean you see by law and I have degree in law you are innocent until you to, to be proven guilty it doesn't matter who you are even if the police see you doing the crime the crime you are still accused you are not yet convicted this is by law you know even if there's a million witness by law you are not convicted by a crime yet you are just an accused person this guy they got him a woman obviously she had mental illness and I guarantee you that you know it's not really a secret you can tell this woman what she did <clears throat> I think she was sitting with some of her friends and she mentioned that 30 something years ago this guy he tried to rape her but she thought this is going to be a Starbucks conversation she is seeking some attention from her friends but she did not notice that this is very serious and then the friends start making phone calls and the phone calls reach all the way to the Democrat and Democrat they call the senators and congressmen and then suddenly she became <laughs> a superstar and everybody when I talk to her she became so important but she never thought is going to go that far actually she didn't want to speak about this issue because obviously it's a lie so this woman who have a mental illness obviously who do not remember imagine somebody did rape somebody don't you remember where I mean come on that is a scene you will never forget for the rest of your life you don't remember the house you don't remember who was there you don't remember who took you there you don't remember who took you back from there and why you did not call the police and why you waited all those years and, and they say to you remember uh, uh, somebody is a you know like uh, um, a victim of uh, sexual offense I mean this woman she is a doctor she is not an educated person she is a doctor she is a teacher she is mature she is not a kid and she is not in the age of a, a child to, to be afraid of somebody why she want to wait all these years and he was a judge he was a judge all those years it's not like this person he disappeared and nobody know who is he he was a public figure for all those years now suddenly he is a bad person so all those 36 years he was a good man and nobody speak against him suddenly women they accuse him of bad things and obviously if you watch the drama and until now it's running if you watch Fox News you will see the drama of those senators from the Republican which is very funny and very stupid and I find them hilarious uh, how they are chanting and they are repeating the same thing this guy is not a qualified and this guy is etc how how Billy Clinton was a qualified for you to call him president how Hillary Clinton the one who did took a lot of money and the proven even Kings they, they announced that the king of Morocco announced the government of Morocco the uh, Qatar etc there's many countries that they, they gave her money how she is a qualified for you and this woman she is it's proven it's, it's not an allegation against her deleting emails of governments is a crime by itself because this is not your emails you see you are a public figure and you are an employee of government so any email is coming to you as not personal email it's not your email you cannot delete those emails this man became the scumbag for the democrat and you will see those funny crazy women going in the street i'm not insulting women by the way i'm talking about those crazy women going in the street shanting and the funny the one who is leading the women you know always always look for the snakes 
the one who is leading the women who is against this guy is a Muslim woman. Her name is Linda Sarsour. How someone she believe in Muhammad to be a prophet, who he is a rapist, can lead such a group. I mean, isn't it stupid? This woman, she believed that Muhammad is a prophet and Muhammad is the biggest rapist in history. How come Linda Sarsour, she don't say, I am against the rapist Muhammad? Muhammad is convicted by their books. You know, I can show you the reference from their books, from the books of this woman, which she believe in and she read and teach her children from, that Muhammad was the biggest rapist in history. And this is not an allegation. This is documented, approved by the Muslims. How stupid Democrat <clears throat> to make those who they are in connection of anti-America organization to lead them in any movement. And why always we find in anything wrong, those people are involved. You know, when Obama was going for election, the Muslims, they open many pages in YouTube and they call one of them Muslims for Obama. I don't know how that can, can happen. According to Islam, Obama is an ex-Muslim. What does that mean? I will show you what does that mean. Read with me carefully. According to Islam, Obama is an enemy number one to Muhammad. And look what Obama, according to Muhammad, his punishment, according to the filthy Muhammad. So how the Muslims, they say Muslims for Obama. And why the Muslims, they vote for Obama. And why all the Muslims are Democrat. You might find maybe few who they are not because simply they are not really Muslims. They are Muslims by name. A true Muslim, he will never, ever, ever join any party which is conservative and care for the country. How the Muslims, who they are people who they are against gays and lesbian. They vote for someone, they promote gay marriage. Anybody can explain to me? How somebody is against abortion, he supports someone, he supports abortion. It doesn't make sense, right? But it does make sense. For me, it does make sense. You see, to make you understand, once they arrested a Saudi prince, he was selling drugs. They told him, isn't it drugs haram, forbidden in Islam? He said, I don't sell it to Muslims. I don't sell it to Muslims. Did, did you get the idea now? It is it is not allowed, yes, but I'm not selling drugs to Muslims. So uh, non-Muslim die, it's okay. So abortion, abortion is 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 forbidden in Islam. But because Obama will kill the babies of the infidels. It's okay. I mean, we vote for him. It took them a lot of money, a lot of time to train 19 hijackers to kill 3,000. Obama, why? By one signature, he killed millions. Do you see how fast and how easy it is? Gay and lesbian for the Muslims is a great opportunity. Why? Because this is not have nothing to do with them. If you are, if you became a gay and you became a lesbian, that will reduce the population of America, and at the end of the day, America will go bankrupt. 
you see uh when i was doing my uh, my master degree i i made a special uh, kind of uh, study uh, and uh, i said why i oppose uh, the idea of uh, and how dangerous it is uh, to have a, a population or a big population of gay and lesbian because that will threat the economy you see forget about you being a religious no problem you don't want to be religious be an atheist okay but you see a nation does not have a children's it's a dead nation as an example ukraine used to be 50 million now ukraine is 40 million in 20 years from now ukraine will be 25 million because the stupid ukrainian are not having children not because they are gays and lesbian but imagine if the nation switched to be gays and lesbian where you get the children from and the one who pay for your retirement is a child today who is going to be a man or a woman tomorrow so it is a very simple you know way to destroy a nation they will destroy themselves because the nation will die will demolish there's no children's no future no tomorrow that's it so why the Muslims always support the Democrat because simply Democrat they bring destruction to America who in the world agree with open borders unless he is a person who hate America I mean what the point of this open open borders I mean what is that I never saw a country believe in such a garbage if I go right now to Mexico and I stay one day the Mexican police will arrest me and will shit me out that's true that's the fact and they have they are right I mean this is their country and you have no right to stay I cannot blame them for sending me out so why in America they want to have open borders because they don't care you see the Muslims they use the Democrat the Democrat they use the Muslims to make it simple they are in bed together for a reason it's a friend with benefit Democrat they don't care for the future of America they care to take over today what will happen tomorrow who care they promise you as an example health insurance and then you find yourself you don't have health insurance you have been forced to buy it and it's very expensive and it's going to destroy your income but yet they promise you they tell you we give you health insurance but where is the health insurance they sign agreement with countries which is going to destroy the economy and people go bankruptcy and who care or what they want to do is to open the borders for George Soros so he can be he can have his empire all the way from Australia all the way to USA this is what all those those uh, 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 agreement is about it's about one person who is who own the world big corporations most of them owned by George Soros and he is the one who decide who is going to be a president who is going to be a prime minister as an example George Soros, Soros he threat imagine the the president of Hungary to be taken off I mean who is George Soros who how you can do that he can his money he own France he own England he own Germany he own half of USA or if not maybe 60 70 percent of USA this guy is is the real beast all those movements those women they fly to Washington DC I mean okay you see where is the money is coming from when when a Trump he won the election overnight tons of thousands they were able to fly to Washington DC from everywhere they reserve every even bus in the city and the cities around in the province around who paid for it and why every homeless who have no job they give him a hotel $100 a day who is paying for that obviously we know who is paying for that but again we go back to zero why always those who want to harm your country they are in total agreement with the liberals 
or what is called ACA Democrat in USA. I never saw a Muslim terrorist, and I'm talking about terrorist like Al Qaeda as an example, is really angry from Democrat. They are not angry from Democrats, they are angry from the Republican. And I cannot even say all the Republican because there is some of the Republican, they are Democrat at the end of the day, like John McCain, he's a scumbag. And I say scumbag because this guy, he betrayed always USA. I, I used to think he is a good guy, but I noticed more and more that he is really a very bad person. This guy, he went all the way to Syria and even he took selfie with the terrorist of Syria, who they are killing Christians in Syria. You know, if I am a Muslim and my religion is against abortion and then I support those who do approve abortion, how I can explain that? How I can support the one who left Islam and vote for him like Obama when Islam is very clear about such a person that he is the enemy of Allah and the punishment as you see in the front of you in the screen. How I am a Muslim and I take Democrat as a friends when the Quran say clearly that the one who take them as a friends, which means the most those who don't believe in Allah, he is one of them and he is a kafir, he is an apostate. How that can happen? It can happen because Muslims are allowed to take you as a friend as long they don't mean it for the benefit of the agenda they have all those verses in front of us is warning the Muslims they cannot ever take non-Muslims as a friend The duty of every Muslim who believe in Islam. Now, I, I don't want to talk about this garbage. Some people, they say to me, well, not all Muslims believe in this. And so the, why you call them Muslims then? If you don't believe in this, he's not a Muslim. I'm talking about those who believe in this. A Muslim, he don't believe in what is written in the Quran. He is no Muslim. Unless he is lying to you, playing, you know, taqiyya, saying, I'm a Muslim, but I don't, you know, this is a, this is a, a misinterpretation. Uh, this is not misinterpretation. We can show you the interpretation of the Muslims. The Muslim themselves, not a guy in the internet, his name is potato tomato scholars. You cannot take them as a friend, they wish to take you as a friend and reject your faith. But take them not as a friends from their ranks until they flee in the way of Allah, which means they join Muhammad and do jihad and kill everybody from the neighbors. But if they turn those people who don't want to join you to be a Muslim. Size them and slay them whenever you find them. That is Islam. So why the Democrat and the Muslims are so, so close to each other? Why every Muslim leader in the Middle East was praying to Allah that Hillary Clinton, she win? You know, when Trump, he won, it was a disaster for Muslim leaders around the world. Because Hillary Clinton, she is in their payroll already they don't need to discuss that I mean she is already in their pocket her husband he get paid sixty thousand dollars for every wedding party to he attend I mean this is how cheap he is imagine you are a president you have a salary until you die you have security guards you have millions of dollars in your banks God knows how much and then you are very cheap to the point somebody can send you a check of sixty thousand dollars and you came like a puppy and you praise that person in his wedding party saying a great words about him in five minutes and this is exactly the price of the letter you will read which is sixty thousand you can go right now and search that obama obama he received donations in about five hundred thousand dollars to take selfie with him by some businessmen in Asia and other countries. Five hundred thousand dollars to take selfie with him, so they can put it in their office and they say, 
I have connection and the president of USA is my friend. If you are a person who love your flag, they accuse you to be a fascist and they accuse you to be a Nazi and they accuse you to be a hater. And if you are a Muslim, if you are a Muslim who don't believe in a flag, any flag except the flag of ISIS, because this is the flag of Islam. No liberal will speak against you. You see, when the liberals they choose such a woman to, to lead them in the marsh, did they tell us exactly what their marsh is about? I mean, who in the world can believe that this is a woman can be the best example to teach us what to march for? A woman, she believed in a book in chapter 4, verse number 34, that the man, he can beat his wife. How come she don't march against this? You see the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34. If you change the translation, you will see always the translation is very between some translator to different translator because always they lie when they translate. You see here they say, and beat them lightly. Beat them lightly. I mean, how lightly that is. And why are you adding the word lightly between two brackets? Is it in the Quran? Where in the Quran it says lightly? A woman, she is being punished. And you are telling me, beat her lightly? So, Linda Sarsour, the one who is teaching the Democrat the morality, wearing the hijab of Islam, to tell us, I am a Muslim. She believes that the husband, he can beat his wife in order to make her obedience. Is that right? And this guy, who is a judge for 30 years, he never did beat his wife. He never did wrong to his wife. You see, when somebody is a rapist, he will not stop there. You know what I mean? A person who is a rapist, he is a cheater, he is etc. He will not stop. You cannot make the, 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 the tail of a dog straight. In the Middle East, we say, if you put the tail of a dog in a frame for a thousand years to make it straight, it's the second you take it off, which means the frame, the tail will bend again. So if this person was a rapist, then he should be a rapist. Not only one, and nobody heard of it, and nobody, no witnesses, and even she don't remember where the place, she don't remember what the house, she don't remember who was there, and all the names she gave, they said, we don't even know what she's talking about. So Linda Sarsour, she is going to lead me as an American to teach me the good manner when she believes in a book. It says that the man, because he is spending money on the women, and because Allah, he made one of them excel the other. You see, the man is excel on the women. And because they spend their money and their property on the women, as if women, they are prostitutes and hookers. Yeah, this is what the Muslim believe. Islam believe a woman is the same as a hooker because you spend money on her so you have the right to beat her I mean this is logical <laughs> so a woman like this who believe in such a garbage book like this like that she is going to teach your women in America in California in Chicago in New York those two women who claim to be liberal I mean how in the world such a woman can teach you manner. I don't know how many liberal women is listening to me right now. And if you are liberals, I feel sorry for you because you've been fooled, you've been misleaded. This party is a sick party, seriously sick. I am an immigrant and thanks God I did not join the Democrat Party. Thanks God.
this party the leaders of this party they care for nothing except how to win the election and you know what this judge is against abortion I mean is killing baby is something part of our value so look let us explain how what the abortion is about I want to go and have sex with every woman in my way and then when the women she get the bread net we send her to the hospital and then we kill the baby I mean how you say that you defend the human right and you etc all the speeches you make and then you kill babies I mean do the bit who, who who gave you the right to take the life of the baby you don't want the baby somebody will take the baby nobody forcing you but you cannot kill the baby who gave you the right to take a life of a human being those liberals, they, stay, they they claim that they stand for the right of dogs and cats, and every one of them she have ten cats, but yet they have no problem to kill babies. I mean, what's wrong with you? Somebody saying a Christian should not support or join any political party. That's false, my friend, and that's not smart. Actually, because of people like you, the Democrats are taking over for many years. Because when you say to the Christians, don't take a party, then you are telling them you will have no voice and you are no one. So then they start taking the crosses down from the churches. They start forcing children not to be taught the Bible. They start forcing us that we will become gay and lesbian because just your majesty decide that Christians should not join parties. Thank you very much. We should join parties and we should be involved heavily. People who don't speak, they have no voice, and nobody will hear you, and nobody will remember you. If you, as a Christian, you see, those who work in politics, this is how, they, how the game work. If you prove that you are there as a power of vote, then they do what you wish. If you are no one, you are not exist, you don't vote, okay, why you want to listen to you? We listen to those who vote. Is that correct, guys? Do we understand why we have to be involved? All the churches who teach that we should not be involved in voting as a power of vote, they are teaching you false teaching. Jesus, Jesus, he said, give what to Caesar to Caesar and what to God to God. Correct? But doesn't mean that Caesar can be a rapist and doesn't mean that Caesar is allowed to kill babies and doesn't mean that he can do whatever he wants and just we agree you see do you remember the story guys of John the Baptist who remember the story a story a story of John the Baptist many Christians they give you verses from Bible saying to you that those who they are leaders are chosen by God this is not really too much accurate you know I, be, I believe strongly that everything happened around us, you know, is under the control of God. But those people are not elected by God. And we are being ordered to not to make a chaos and bloodshed just to go against a king. However, we've never been ordered to go silence if he is wrong. As an example, John the Baptist. John the Baptist, he lost his life for what reason? Anyone remember? Anyone remember? Why he lost his life? Who remember why? Because he spoke against the ruler, the king. He's a king. Right, and he spoke against what you cannot marry this woman. That's it. <laughs> See, give what to Caesar to Caesar, yes, but it's not to Caesar to do whatever he wish against God teaching. 
that what is a Christianity is about my friend so they fool you you know during during the time when the church is controlling the the, the crowd and the church became an organization of dirt and politics like Muhammad then the crowd they have been ordered to obey the king because if you disobey the king then you are disobeying God that's what they want you to be that's false and when you say you should not join party but you can be involved in politics that's again is not uh, accurate because if you want somebody to present you who is better to present you than somebody is a Christian and if nobody Christian is involved in a party then how we can find somebody present us in the White House I mean use your my use your brain my friend what do you want us to vote for somebody is an atheist because he is going to speak for our value so we as a Christian we cannot involve in parties but we should vote okay vote for who if no Christian are there we will vote for a for a, a Muslim an atheist I don't know why people don't want to use their brain the problem is that we've been taught always wrongly many things as an example we as a Christians we are you know Jesus said if somebody slam your face uh, uh, the right cheek give him the other one how many of you heard this uh, verse uh, in the Bible right you heard this verse right okay have you ever heard any priest speaking that Jesus said to his uh, go and buy a sword anyone heard a priest talking about it they repeat one sentence Jesus said do this you know okay we are people who love peace and we are peaceful etc etc okay that's wonderful but nobody read for us the verse where it says Jesus go and buy a sword actually there's many Christians they never heard of it if there is any Christian he never heard of this verse in the Bible before They don't want to tell you about it so they tell you that if you are a christian you are not allowed to carry weapon christian they should not carry weapon my friend who said that who said that what's wrong with people i will tell you this story which is very funny and happened happened to me personally you know we used to go and do hiking you know like uh, you know a group christian groups and for sure at that time i was you know uh, i don't remember like maybe um, 23 24 something like this in, in the 20s and i always carry a gun with me always all my friends who they are Christians they are disgusted because I carry my guns with me and they say to me why you carry a gun I mean and, and they look at me down you know I mean like they don't talk to you to discuss with you why you carry it they look at you down like why you carry a gun I mean what's wrong with you what's wrong with you so one day we are doing hiking going in the mountains and suddenly it was you know like the rain started and suddenly we start hearing the wolves getting so close and they are shouting all those who hate guns suddenly they are holding me from every arm they they they, they like, like if you have a glue suddenly all of them they are in the top of me and they, is your gun with you is your gun with you i said what's wrong with you i thought gun is bad suddenly my gun became the most priceless thing they used to humiliate me every day for having a gun with me now in the time of danger i was the best in the group 
and everybody is sitting here close to me and they said to me please make your gun ready and then I told them uh, by the way I have only one bullet they said what one bullet only what <laughs> For sure, I was joking with them. Just I'm playing them, you know. I mean, look how how ignorant they were humiliating me for a long, long time. Make fun of me for carrying my gun. Each time we go, why you have a gun with you? Well, we are going in the in the wood, we are going in the mountain, you never know. So why I will not carry my gun with me? They laugh at it, and this guy, like, you know, maybe he like to show off, maybe etc. You know, and actually, I'm not even showing it, but you know, you cannot hide it. You are hiking, so they spend the night literally attached to my body. I mean, they are fighting who is going to get a closer because there's many wolves around, and we, you know, we found like a like a graveyard to sleep, and we could not find a place even to to stay in, in the, from the from the rain. So there was an empty grave, graveyards. Uh, you know, they have like rooms for graves. You know, it's it was a nice place actually, not not bad. But anyway, the wolves all over, and they are scared to death. And now the gun is very useful. So some Christian they teach you that you as a Christian you should not bear arm. That is extremely false. Jesus taught that the one who take by the sword, by the sword will be taken. That is justice. But he didn't say take a sword with you. He said that actually. And he ordered them even to say and go and sell your garment and buy. Sell your clothes and buy one. And when they said to him, we have etc. sword, they said this is enough, which means it's enough to protect yourself. He's not preparing an army to harm anyone. But you travel between cities, you go between towns, and there is there is there is a pirate, there is thieves, there is criminals, there is killers. So you should be ready for what is coming. But in churches, they quote for you every verse except this verse. Why? Because this verse been ignored for centuries by the churches because kings didn't want you to have a sword. If the Christians have swords and they can protect themselves and they can question the king for his false behavior, then the Christians became dangerous for this king or this uh, authority or even to the church. So, through centuries, they taught the Christians to be like, you know, no one. I mean, you have no voice to vote. You have no voice in politics. The priest, he is the one who decide, or let us say at that time, the Pope or etc. All the corrupt ones are there. And they are the one who decide for you. Where, who is going to be there? I mean, who are you? You are not allowed even in certain time, even the Bible is not allowed for the crowd to have in their hand. Which means Christians, imagine, cannot even read the Bible because they don't want you to know. So my friend, we as a Christians, we have a duty to stand for our rights and the rights of our children and the rights of the one is not born yet like the ones they are killing them by what it's called abortion if you witness a crime and you don't do anything about it your best you are part of it what do you think of a christian guy he walk in the street and he see a woman being raped what he should do okay we are not uh, we should not we uh, we are peaceful we should not hurt people etc but what i should do if i see a woman being raped what do you think guys what we should do you as a christian man walking in a street let us say late at night and you found a guy trying to rape a woman what you would do you will stand next to him and i will say i pray to jesus that you will stop raping her is that what you would do 
Is that what they taught you in your church? Or you will stop him even if you have to use violence. If you do nothing, you are a hypocrite and you are a false Christian. If you stand praying to Jesus to save the women, obviously you are a stupid idiot. We should fight evil. And we have a duty to fight and stand against evil. There is somebody saying you guys are funny. I don't know why he is saying that. For sure we are funny. You should see. Uh, you should see if you stand next to me and you look at the mirror and you will see my face and your face next to your my my face. For sure you will laugh. Why we are funny? You know. In life, you see, there is people who don't deserve to be with God, and there is people who deserve to be with God. As an example, you go, you know, let us say you are in a, you are in a store, huh? and then a criminal, he get in, and he have a gun in his hand, and he starts shooting people, and you are just behind him. But because you are peaceful, oh, you don't want to do anything. No, you do anything, because if you don't do anything, you have opportunity, you are behind him, you can take the gun from him. If you are a person who is not willing to do that, you are a partner of the crime. He will shoot more people. A Christian person who watch a crime and do nothing about it, he is no Christian. If I see a Muslim woman and somebody trying to rape her, I will defend the Muslim women. Not because she is a Muslim or not, because she's a human being. Because this is wrong. Because I'm a Christian. We stand for what is right. We don't do what Islam does. We don't do what Muhammad do. We don't do what they do. You know, uh, I was taking the bus during my trip, and uh, during during that that uh, that day, I encountered two Muslim women. One was in the bus. I gave her my seat, and another one in the bus station. We are waiting for the bus. A woman. She came. She's an old woman, and all the seats are busy, and it was raining which means she will stand in the middle and poor women there's no place to sit so i gave her my seat and both of them they are muslims when i saw her i did not see her as a muslim woman i see her as a woman need help who cares if she's a muslim or not i'm a christian i will help any woman who need help she is a muslim she is a hindu she is a buddha she is an atheist it doesn't matter you help and you do what you need to do as a christian In the bus, when I gave her the seat, I spoke to her in Arabic because she's an Arab. And she said thank you in Arabic, and she saw the cross in my in my neck. I'm sure that will have an impact on her. And imagine if this woman she knew that this guy is a Christian prince. Just imagine. So my friend, if you are a person who like liberals, ask yourself some questions about what you like about them. Do you like really killing babies? Do you like that tomorrow you will have no flag? 
Do you like really that one world state where the whole world is controlled by George Soros and corporation? You see, sometimes we watch movies, and sometimes I laugh at those people who believe in uh, uh, like one world order. But one world order is 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 what it was socialist is about. It's exactly what socialists is about. They want to open the the borders. They have a they have an international police. They can grab you from any place. They will make a law, and actually they are doing that to forbid you from opening your mouth. They speak about democracy, but there's no democracy. Who dare to say something they're not agree about? You see, as an example, just to 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 to, to uh, just an example. In France, they made a law that if somebody he speak in public and he support the Nazi or the fascist, he will be taken to court. Okay. If somebody deny the Holocaust, which is the massacre against the Jews, he will go to jail up to five years. I mean, how in the world that can be? You see, I believe strongly that the Jews were killed by millions, yes. And I, I, I agree that this is a very uh, horrible crime. But how you speak of democracy and people, they can speak their mind, but yet if somebody speaks his mind, you take him to jail five, five years. That's stupid. You know what I mean? You are saying to people what they can say or what they cannot say. And you are telling them, if you say this, I will take you to jail. I mean, where is the democracy and where is the freedom? You are the same as Hitler. If you don't agree with him, he kill you. If you don't agree with them, they take you to jail. They are the one who decide for you what you can say, what you can write, what you can read, and what you can eat. Even the food, you see, Hillary Clinton, she wanna, she wanna, uh, uh, Obama and Hillary Clinton, they have, they are from the same social uh, uh, mafia. They want to decide what children can eat. I mean, your child. Why? Because children are getting fat. I mean, look at her, look at her, Hillary Clinton. You know, the, the, the balloons is coming from her, her, her face. From all the meat she eat every day. Yet she want to teach us, and she want to force on you your food. The same as Islam. Islam in Islam is and involved in your underwear. Even the underwear have to be Islamic. Even your socks have to be Islamic. Even the sandal. Do you know that if you go to Hajj, you cannot wear a sandal have pieces in it, which means the whole sandal have to be done by one piece of leather. I mean, it's, it's super ritual stupidity. You have, you cannot wear underwear. You have to wear a sheet. You have to shave your head. You have blah, 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 blah. They decide for you. Do you know that in Islamic countries, if you eat in the month of Ramadan publicly, you go to jail at least for 30 days? And in some countries like Saudi Arabia, they whip your back 90, 90 times. They force on you when you can eat, when you cannot eat. What you can eat, what you cannot eat. What you can say, what you cannot say, this is exactly, this is why Islam and socialism is the same. The only difference between them, the Muslims, they do that under the name of God. The socialists, they, knew that, do, they do do that. And their and they're, and they're, uh, government, uh, they make it God. You know, and they, they decide for you. They became God for you. They decide for you what you can say, what you cannot say, what you can do, who can live and who can die. We go and we have sex. The women get a bread net and then we kill the baby. When who is giving the right for the women to kill the baby? The Democrat, the socialist. And the what? And wh why? Who are you? How you can do that? What if you are that baby who one day his mom decided to kill him? What if Hillary Clinton and those crazy people, their mother, when they were young, they decide to kill them? All right. Always there is something wrong with those people. And then we find that those people, they are going to ask a Muslim woman to lead us to what is right and what's wrong.
a woman who believe that a man can beat his wife the man he can have up to four wives and you know the funny here if you see the article women marsh leader Salsur launches racial attack against white women hmm. do you know that Muslims believe that only white people enter heaven do you know that do you know that the Muslim they make speeches I, I I saw a Muslim was speaking I think in Texas he said in this city hall the the one who built the city hall he used to own slaves he forgot that this guy his all his book is about slaves and he's a prophet what he he's a slave dealer You see the hypocrisy they try to fool you and say to you that we are against slaves when all the Quran is about slave Muhammad he owned many slaves and he raped them and he kidnapped them and he enslaved people he enslaved he did not even just buy he enslaved he caused people to be slaves People who used to walk free in the street, live their life. Muhammad, he attacked them, he kidnapped them, he forced them into slavery. How we can have such a woman? And if you see, guys, if you see the videos, I wish I can play the videos, you will, you will die laughing. This woman, she was telling them, we need to march. We need to stay focused. She is telling them they are like puppies around her. You know, they are stupid idiot around her. And she is giving order for those liberal women. I'm glad she did not call her brothers the Mujahideen to do something. You know, if we ask uh, somebody speak about lesbian, if we ask Linda Sarsour, what is your opinion about lesbian? As long as you are living between the lesbian and you support the lesbian, do you believe in the Quran? She will say yes. Okay, what what the what the punishment of lesbian? Anyone knows what the punishment of lesbian? Anyone knows? What is the punishment? Let us see if anyone remember. How those people, they accept such people who believe in those things to lead them. It's not all right let us go to chapter four If you read here carefully, we will find something very very disappointing for those who accept a Muslim woman wearing the hijab to be their leader. For those women of your women who they are guilty of loudness, call Two witnesses to witness for you're against them of you're against them I mean translation is horrible and if they testify about it then confine them to the houses until death take them or Allah appoint his way 
What is the punishment for a lesbian woman in Islam? Anyone understand what is the punishment here? Jail for life until death. The liberals they accepted the women to be their leader who believe that a lesbian should be jailed for life. And the hypocrite Muhammad, look what he did. If you are a gay who do the same as the lesbian, what is the punishment for him? Anyone knows? Because Muhammad, he was a gay. If he is a gay, then beat him with sandals. And if he repent, leave him alone. <laughs> Look at the hypocrisy and the double standard of this filthy religion. If the women are lesbian, we jail them to die. If the man is a gay, we beat him with sandals. And if you repent, leave him alone. After that, Muhammad, people, they start accusing him left and right. So he wanted to prove that he is not what they say. So he said, the one who is a gay, kill him, as you see in the hadith here. So the Muslims, they say that this hadith abrogate the Quran. Have you ever heard of somebody he is a prophet of God? If he says something and his God says something, the followers they follow what he say against what his God say. Yeah, if you go and read the interpretation, you can go and read the interpretation. It says you beat them with sandals. Actually, I can show you the interpretation right now. Hey, hold on, let me give me a second. Let me open the interpretation website. All right, because I don't want people to say I'm making you know my own interpretation. You know, the Muslims they cry, it doesn't matter what you do. This is the Islamic website, the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. All right, do you see it? Or I'm making things up, guys. Does it say here, beat them with sandals? <laughs> Do you see the word sandals? Oh, I should highlight. Hmm. Those who do intercourse, etc. Okay. Insult them and beat them and beating with sandals. Do you see it? A gay, you beat him with sandals, he will get excited. Anyone remember the hadith about uh, uh, the one who, who was angry from killing Uthman? Anyone remember? You can find it in the Shia website, translated there. There's a guy. You know, the, the, the caliphate, Osman, was killed by the Muslims, as usual. Muslims always, they killed each other forever. and Nothing changed from the time of Muhammad until now. So Uthman was killed. And a man who is a companion of Muhammad, he said, I swear by Allah, if I know who killed Uthman, I'm going to do bang, bang to him. I mean, this is how faithy they are. And he mean it. Bang, bang. You know what the word bang, bang, right? A gay, he heard him and he said, You will do that? He said, yes, I will do that if I know who killed Uthman. Then the guy, he said, I am the, killed, the one who killed Uthman. Then the guy, he put him down, make him bend over, and he started doing, you know. And then the gay was screaming from underneath saying, if I know this is the penalty and the punishment of killing Uthman, I would love to kill Uthman every day. If you don't believe me, go to the Shia website and read the story.
Actually, maybe we can find it now. If I know that this is the punishment of killing Uthman, I would love to kill Uthman every day. <laughs> anyway, you see, I wanted to share this video with you. I'm not going to keep it there, actually, to be sure that people take it down, download it, load it everywhere. It doesn't matter what country you are in. Socialism is very dangerous. It might sound for some, it's more, you know, speaking for your right and equality, but you will notice that those who sponsor socialism are the most rich billionaire in the world. And then you ask yourself, how someone like George Soros, he believe in socialism? You know what I mean? How the owner of Google believe in socialism? How the owner of Facebook believe in socialism? And yet they have hundreds of billions like Google, I mean, Google is more rich than many countries. All the money of Africa together is not equal to the money Google have. How they believe in socialism and equality, yet they have a lot of money. A lot of money. Actually, you are poor because they have that money. So if they are truly, they believe in socialism, which is like kind of a communist, Shouldn't they give their money out if they really believe in it? We have Al Gore as an example. He used to fly for years. It's his business to give lecture about Go Green, global warming. Yet the idiot himself, he fly in his own jet, which is going to burn more than all the gas you will burn for the coming 20 years driving your car in one trip. All those who speak about global warming, they drive SUV and they have many bodyguards going around them and burning a lot of gas. But yet your car is the problem. You should not buy a, you know, USV, but they have. And they buy the most expensive big engine cars. But you, 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 the one, the poor you, who is driving a little tiny car with you know, 1.5 horse engine, you are the problem. They are hypocrites. They live different from what they say. The wedding party of the daughter of Hillary Clinton cost about $2.5 million. And you know, like a person like Trump, this guy is a businessman before he became president. He's rich since he was a kid. So I'm not surprised that he is rich. But how a woman, she spent all her life working for government. She can afford to spend $2.5 million for her daughter wedding. You know what I mean? Where, where's the money coming from? Somebody is working for the government. And nobody question where the money is coming from. How they can afford such a money? What is the salary of me being a president? $60,000 a month? But the poor you, they fool you, and they make all the, 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 the stupid promises, and they make you go to bed dreaming about something will happen tomorrow. You know, when I used to live in the Middle East, all, all government in the Middle East, they fool their citizen. As an example, you know, let us say uh, you live in Jordan. You know, the king of Jordan is a scumbag. He is an official corrupt person. He is the agent of her majesty intelligent he is he worked for her for for the british government 
he and his father and his grandfather all of them they are made by the British intelligent and the country have no income so what what such a guy how he can survive promises promises and playing games so now Saudi is against Qatari so now how we can make money we are out of money almost the country was collapsing a few months ago right away he came kissing the shoes of Trump help me otherwise Israel Israel will be in threat somebody else will take over the government and all the peace agreement with Israel will go so he got money from USA he got money from Israel he got money from Saudi Arabia telling them if you don't help me I'm going to ask the Qatari it's you know everything is promised by a game and then in order to make his citizen cool down he told them look all those countries are promising us to give us more jobs Qatar promised to give more jobs to Jordania and Saudi Arabia but all of them they lie to those poor people around them just to cool them down to suck their anger and this is exactly what the socialist does it's like a steam cooking pot it have a hole and the purpose of that hole that the steam will not be too much to the point this cooking pot is going to, to, to explode so they leave a hole for you to breathe from so you will not be exploding so you will have a manual wages they will they will you know they they will keep you surviving to the point you are not dying yet but the fact you are not living yet too you know when i went to germany and supposedly as i know about germany it's a rich country i noticed that people in germany are poor very poor very poor people they work to survive nobody's making money very few people are very rich extremely filthy rich and the rest they are just people paying for their rent pay, paying for their heating paying for their food in the refrigerator but they don't have really money my idea about a person who live in germany that he is living a good life this is what i thought i never met one from those who i spoke to is making good money But this is Germany. Germany is a very rich, wealthy country. So where is the money? I'm not saying, you know, imagine you are in Germany and you are hungry. That will be a disaster. This is not Somalia. Why should be hungry in Germany? <laughs> you see, nobody is hungry. That's not a, that's not good, not a good answer, my friend. Why somebody living in, 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 in a country like Germany should be hungry anyway? living just to pay your bills is not really a good life you spend your life you cannot buy an apartment when you can buy an apartment in germany a person who make two thousand euro when the day will come you can afford to buy an apartment something you own everybody can go to hospital yeah well thank you Everybody can go to hospital, but always, you know, hospitals and governments are really horrible. Rich people, they don't go to the hospital you go to. You stay in the line for 10 hours and may, you might die before they even help you. If you cannot afford to buy a house, to buy an apartment not a house apartment i mean so what you accomplish in your life people who they are over a certain age in germany if you want to know why they fly overseas and they choose to live in asian countries not because really they are in love in Asian countries, but because the money they give, they, they receive from the government is just to buy bread and butter and, and almost to, to, you know, survive. I mean, the minimum. 
they don't go to Asian countries to retire there because they are in love with those countries as much it's because the money they receive in Germany is not good for Germany you know when I uh, I went in Europe in many countries in Europe and I noticed how expensive it is Europe is very expensive Europe is not a good place for somebody is poor to live the socialist is not doing good for the poor they are doing good for themselves one person he have in his bank account hundreds and hundreds of millions of euro his house alone is like maybe a hundred euro a million euro and then you you spend your life either leasing a car sucking the money you make fooling you making you pay for a lease or you have to spend your life going in the bus you pay for your rent you pay for your electricity you pay for etc and then at the end of the month you have nothing what kind of life you have and then in the top of that in order to keep you poor they open their borders to immigrant you see many people they think that immigrant it just happened because those people they are open-minded this is not true immigrants are necessity to make money to suck blood the rich ones like Soros they don't want to hire someone he is a German in Germany who will ask for a lot of money big salary retirement plan etc because even the 2,000 euro you make for him it's a big money so let us bring immigrants who would they accept anything they just want to live here immigrants are not because they are not there because those liberals they are welcoming immigrants they are there because corporation they want to suck a new blood your blood is already exhausted and you cause them too much you know what i mean why I want to hire an, uh, uh, you know, like a, a, a French citizen who is uh, going to ask me for at least uh, 3,000 euro to work in my farm when I can get somebody uh, for 400 euro and he will sleep in a box. It's not about helping the, the 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 refugee. They don't care for refugee. It's all about new labor, cheap labor, very cheap. There is jobs. If they want to ask you to work in it, you will ask for a good salary. I mean, it's not fair. So having the new immigrant is a very very nice solution for them. They will suck the blood of those immigrants in the first few years. You work anything, you know. Me, when I was a student, I accept any job, anything. They give they, they give me pennies. Honest to God, they give me penny. They 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 use me. As a student, I make five hundred dollars. The same job is a three thousand dollars, but just because I'm a student, they abuse me. He's an immigrant. He need money. He will accept anything. You don't speak good uh, good uh, uh, language you don't you don't have any uh, i mean so what you will do you accept this is why in like as an example california they are so much in love with immigrants cross the borders because it's a very cheap employment those poor mexicans with my respect to the mexicans they go through the borders seeking better life and this is normal everybody seek better life 
everybody have the right to seek better life but you are not seeking really better life they are going to suck your blood you go there and now let us say okay uh, a Mexican he come to California what he can do for a living he is a farmer so he can do work in landscape okay so now an American guy he hire 50 Mexicans and he opened a landscape company he gave each one of them three hundred dollars a week when in fact he made it from him every day three hundred dollars a day socialism is nothing but slavery it's a it is it, it is an you know it's an organized crime and they try to make it like it is something nice and beautiful and it's about a humanity it's about a human rights it's about we stand for a human we want okay everybody all refugee are welcome she is not speaking for herself miracle she speak for the corporations they are welcome to do what? Okay, they came. What and what is next? What is next? Oh, I'm sure the the sons will be like this, the same as the father. All right. No, no, but socialism, my friend. Let you see the different. Uh, Political agenda can change. There is parties, yes, but you see, the, as an example, in America, Democrat is is based on socialism, and socialism is not something local. You see, in America, or Republican are local, but social the, the social are not. It's not local. Are you, this is this is the danger of it. It's not something that happen only in a state. It's something happening around the world. They want to take over the world to make one world a state. And at the end of the day, the rich is controlling the poor, but yet the flag is a communist. You see, did you see the video? Uh, I, maybe I should uh, load more videos about my trip to China. When I was in China, I was surprised. I saw BMW. Mercedes, Ferrari, Maserati, I mean, all kind of uh, ex extremely expensive cars. And this is China. Like how in China people, they can drive those cars? Who are the ones driving it? You know what I mean? You go to China, you think everybody driving a bicycle. Chinese, the communist, they own Europe, they own America. But they are communist. How that can be? Communism and socialism is the flag that we are to make people equal. But this is it's a lie. They are the most rich people ever. And then the rest of the Chinese, they live just to live. Like, you know, numbers. Labor force, but there is people in China who not only they own billions but trillions. When I was in the Philippines, electricity companies, gas companies, train companies, airports, either controlled by Chinese uh, uh, companies or Muslim companies. As simple as, as that. One of two, choose one of two. Either the owner is a Chinese or the owner is a Muslim. China will not destroy the socialist for China is a socialist. You have no idea what China is about. It, this is the communism is a, a socialist. What are you talking about? The same idea, you know. They fool you with the with equality in that we want to take the money from the rich, give it to the poor, etc. The same as Obama was saying to us. Hillary Clinton, she want to charge 40% tax supposedly to the rich. Suppose she want to charge the rich more, right? Tax. But the fact that the one who pay tax is not the rich. The, 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 just to show you how they fool you. You see, 
if I am a person who own a car company, or let us say I am a car maker, and I own a company like Ford, all right? And then Hillary Clinton, she says to me, I'm going to charge you, I am a socialist, I'm going to charge you 40% of your income. All what I need to do, increase the price of the car. As simple as that. And at the end of the day, you are the one, you are the one who will pay for my tax. I am a person who sell uh, sugar, uh, food, uh, etc. Uh, tea. You see, I remember when I used to buy the tea for the box for six dollars. Now the box, I think, is 11, 12. You know, I'm not sure. Twice. So what they do? It's not them who pay the tax. The rich one never pay tax. They fool you. They say we will charge the rich one tax. The fact it is you who pay. Rich people don't pay tax. You pay it. They charge you. They increase tax in airline. Who paid the tax for the airline? Not the airline. It's you. You buy the tax. You, you, you know, like I just bought bought an air ticket because I'm invited to do an, uh, a seminar somewhere. And the ticket, it was for what? 150 and the tax was almost 100 something. You know what I mean? Tax. But you, I am the one who paid the tax. It's not the airline. It stayed there in the ticket. When you buy the ticket, go and check it out. Go right now and search on any website. Try to buy a ticket. The price of the ticket is etc. And the tax is etc. So it is not them who pay the tax. It's you. They just try to fool you. Try to present themselves that they are the one who defend the poor. But the fact, all of them, they are rich. A rich never defend the poor. You see, when the Trump he make a speech about defending the poor, I laugh because it's not true. If Trump he defend the poor, well, give me your money, donate all your money for the poor, then I will believe you. But that will never happen. Trump is a person who won the election, and he want to prove to the American that he is capable of his promises. As simple as that. He's a businessman, so he do perfect job. Because he knew all the lies of the business. He knew how to make money. So this guy, he is treating America as a corporation, as a company. And he is forcing everybody to pay him money. To pay him, in this case, not to his pocket, to America. Which is good. So he's perfect for the job. But Trump don't defend the poor. He's a rich, very wealthy, rich man. But yet he is good enough for me. Because at least jobs are available. The currency is not losing the value. America is respected. Same time, he keeps his promises to the Christians to bring people who they are conservative to be judges. And as we see now, the socialists, they are going crazy because a Christian judge who against abortion against etc etc all what they stand for he is going to be in the supreme court and that's why i sponsor him otherwise i know that trump he don't care really for the poor he don't know what what poor mean the only one knows what it what it's mean to be a poor is somebody is poor and a poor person he will never be there they will not even allow him to be there if you look at all those who they are there in the offices, in the White House, in the Congress, in the Senate, all of them, they are filthy rich businessmen. Can you imagine how much the wealth of Trump will double after he became a president? Because you know, yes, he is not going to get a bribe, but everybody will make a deal with his companies now. It's a golden opportunity. All the princes of the Middle East, they want a partnership with his kids now. 
Trump he own hundreds of buildings in Dubai and almost they are giving them like I mean just come here you know welcome because everybody want to seek his protection so he don't get a bribe but he get he get reward in different way in a legal way let's say and you know at the end of the day what I like about this guy, he say things as it is. Always, always be aware of those who don't speak their mind. Those are the one you should fear them. He is not a person who speak what you like to hear. He say it as it is. And that for me is enough to know who he is. So I know he's rich. I know he love money. I know. But I know that he say things as it is. So I know what he is thinking about. I know that this guy, he keep his promises. Everything he promised before the election, he did it very fast. You see, if you go and check as an example, how many presidents they promised to move the embassy of USA to, uh, to Jerusalem? Obama, he promised. Billy Clinton, he promised. George Bush, he promised. I mean, go, go, go back. I think 30, 40 years ago, since I think Kennedy. All of them they promised to, to move the embassy to Jerusalem and all of them they mentioned that in their election propaganda but nobody did this guy he did everything he said before the election he did after the election and I respect him for that he's the man He is the man. He did not lie to us and say, I will do this, and he do something the opposite. He did exactly what he said. He will build the wall. He's building the wall. I will change the, the agreement with Canada and Mexico. He changed the agreement with Canada and Mexico. Everything he promised, he did. Everything Obama and the socialists, they promised never happened. The only thing they are able to accomplish is killing babies. People go more poor. There's no jobs. Everybody, welfare is 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 skyrocketing. Drugs is skyrocketing. Go guys, go go on, go and search the news and see how many people they die every day because of drugs. Because of the socialist. They found that in the sewage. Let me see which which city. I forgot which city, but this is in Europe. They found that in the sewage, there's tons of cocaine. This is because they, you know, people, people they use it and they piss, right? <laughs> I mean, the whole, the whole system is collapsing. It's not, it's not doing good. Socialist is not doing good. Where is, where is, you know what what you accomplish really as a socialist what the french government they accomplish as a socialist what the british accomplish i saw in the other day in the news that the wife of the prince what his name this uh, this actor she opened the door she broke the rules and she opened the car door by herself i mean this is the news this is the news and how many tens of thousands of young people dying every day because of the drugs we don't see it but it's a news she opened the door of the car by herself I mean, can you believe it i mean this is the news we are waiting for Yeah, the new UK princess who is going to divorce her husband in, 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 in a year or two. Just count on my words. Who need the princess these days? Even that is for the sake of money. You see, they made a study. If we take the queen out and her family, how much UK will lose of tourism? A lot. 
there's many people they come from around the world to visit and see the queen money <laughs> it's all about money the you know what the queen and what princess what those people they do for a living what exactly their job and who need them a little kid he's called a prince do you still believe in this garbage he's born he's, he's doing poo poo and now you call him a prince and then he is going to take over the crown one day i mean this is madness so they are socialist but yet they claim to be conservative they are open-minded but yet you cannot say your mind if you don't if you speak against what they believe they execute you they kill you today i heard i saw in the news that the head of the interpol was kidnapped you see yesterday I, two days ago i made a, a video about what if a government kidnap you do you believe it that the head of the interpol disappear how the head of the international police disappear who can believe in that if the head of the police in the in the world he is kidnapped and the french police do not know how to find him where is he I mean, don't you feel safe and secure? You must be. So they say to you, 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 we should not allow citizens to have guns. Only criminals should have guns. This is what they say. You see, when when a thief he knew that in this city there's nobody have guns, and he is the only one or a criminal like him, they have guns. Who can stop them? Nobody. Do you remember? Do you remember when? Uh, when the the Abdul, the terrorist, they attack the the cartoon uh, newspaper, the one who made a cartoon about Muhammad, and they killed him. Do you remember the two policemen? They came in the bicycle. I mean, how silly! Police don't have guns. This is what the socialist is about. I mean, how stupid is that? They believe for many years that if a police is having a gun, he is terrifying the people. I mean, how in the world he can even be a police? So two policemen, they came in their bicycle to fight terrorists who have a clashing cough. What they will beat them with? How they will fight them? And the result is the two poor policemen, they slaughter like chicken. Everything those socialists they stand for is crazy and is stupid. You see, I support that everybody should have weapon. Everybody. At the end of the day, you are responsible for what you do. If you are a criminal, you will pay for your crime. But at least everybody have the right to defend himself, and everybody have the chance to defend himself. By the time you call the police and the police come, the criminal, he will be crossing the border. Actually, while he crossed the border, he might move and live in the second floor in the top of Harry Clinton. But if every citizen have a gun, the, 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 the thief, the criminal, the rapist, he knew that this is not is going to be a woman alone. She have a gun. You know what I mean? The woman is not a woman no more. She is not a weak person no more. Because when you have a gun, you can kill an elephant. Every citizen should have a gun, should have weapon. A house without weapon is an invitation for thieves and criminals to get in. They go in, they kill you, they rape your wife, they take the money and bye-bye. And then the police will come maybe a day or two after if they heard about you. In Switzerland, everybody by law, he have to have a gun. Well, I won't, you know, I, I have a gun since I was a baby. 
you know where I'm coming from we don't have a problem with that we have more for more guns than the fork I was introduced actually to guns more before forks I don't know even what fork is like what is that anyway everything have to have a reason and always seek the good reason for anything guns don't kill people kill so if as long there is a criminals they can have guns then why you cannot have guns? you are the good citizen criminals can have guns and I cannot that's crazy right that's that's crazy the bad person he can shoot and he can kill and he can get away just because the law took his side because when the law says and this is what the socialist is about too the the, the socialist they always by taking the wrong decision they take the side of the criminal the criminal he can stop you anytime he want in the street your car in the traffic light you can you can it's easy you see you think you are driving your car and you are safe you're not you know you are a uh, you are a citizen who obey the law and then you see a traffic light red light you stop it's night time a guy he come next to you and he put the gun in, in the front of the window your window cannot protect him from protect you from from the bullet he knew that you don't have a gun that's it he knew in this country in the city nobody allowed to have a gun he's the only one there and how in the world you will be lucky that a policeman would come and even if a policeman he will come he will hide behind the wall and he will ask him to drop his weapon he will not risk his life he's just an employee the only one who really care for your life is you the rest will hide this is why i believe the socialist like liberals they are really a bunch of idiots everything they stand for and look they stand they stand for silly stupid stuff as an example just a few months ago they start the new propaganda that uh it's not right that girls have a bathroom alone and boys have bathroom alone somebody is a gay he can use the girl's bathroom i mean what is that I mean, look, look how silly their mind is. I mean, they are, they have, uh, as if the whole problems in the world are solved and now we are out of problems. So we are trying to find a problem to solve. This is the problem now. What about you make a bathroom for the gays and solve the problem instead of having one for the, okay. Imagine, imagine your daughter, she go to the bathroom and then a guy is standing next to her and he is unzipping and he is getting his thing out. And the excuse is he's a gay. I mean this this is a crazy they are silly they are stupid they make me sick and yet they speak that they are the one who define for us the morality and the moral issues what is moral what is good and what is bad it's good to do abortion it's good to be a gay. It's good to be a lesbian. It's good to take to to force children to go and attend wedding for a gay. I mean, a child he doesn't even know what gay mean. Why you want to take him to a wedding? And what kind of wedding is that? He's a child. It's like a Muslim child. Muhammad saying to him, "What he told him: If you uh, uh, commit suicide, you will get virgins." There is a there is a character a character. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Give me a second. Where the guy, the kid, he said to the to Muhammad, "What versions?" What versions? Let me see if I can find it. Now, I, I saw this uh, this drawing many, many years ago, but it's funny. Where Muhammad, the terrorist, he is promising a Muslim child to suicide himself between the Jews and telling him, if you do this, you will get 72 versions. The child, he said, what version mean? 
You know, look like it's going to be hard to find it. Yeah. Yeah, I cannot find it. Anyway, so you know, uh, uh, and this is why this is why a, a, a terrorist organization and uh, Muslims, generally speaking, they love the socialist. They are, uh, you know, what what they, what they call it. Um, do you know the story where where they enter uh, like an empty horse inside the city? What, what what is the name of the story somebody remind me as a gift this is how the the the, the Muslims they see the socialist they are the opportunity they are the empty horse Troy, yeah, Helen of Troy. So they make you open your door, and we have a gift for you. It's going to be a beautiful horse. So they present themselves as the horse who is beautiful, but yet inside that horse is all the mascara is going to happen. And if you are the wise person who try to tell them this is not right we should not allow this horse to get in they will silence you because there's many fools right there who don't want to listen who they are greedy next month the sanctions against iran is going to start the price of gas is going up and now trump he have to keep his promise to keep the sanctions i want to see what the socialists will do when the sanctions started and the price of gas will increase actually already it is increasing about 20 cents if not more so it doesn't matter what you do I mean this guy he have an enemy and he have to fight if you don't if you go to war they will say he is a war warrior he like to do war destruction if he shake hands with the president of Korea they say he shake hands with the dictator if he threaten him that he is going to bomb him they say he is a crazy he is out of his mind it doesn't matter what you do Few months ago, they were laughing at him, saying, "This guy is a crazy. He's going to take us to war, nuclear war with the, with, the, with with North Korea." Then he was right. He forced this man. He put all the heavy sanctions in his country to the point he he squeezed his neck. He can't breathe no more. This guy, he came like a puppy, and he says, "Okay, Trump, what do you want?" So the guy, he have to meet him. I mean, how we can accomplish peace without meeting the person, person to person? Trump, he met him. Trump became a criminal because he shake hands with a criminal. How, you how dare you to shake hands with him? What do we do? What do you want? What do you want? Do you want us to go in nuclear war? Which one is better? Shake hands and take his weapon from him? Or we go in war and millions of people die? Those people, doesn't matter what you do. What is matter who you are. If you are one of them, even if you are covered by garbage you smell like perfume even if you are a child molester even if you are a rapist like Clinton even if you are corrupt like Hillary it doesn't matter nobody see on you a rapist or a criminal or a person who is false sworn president who took an oath fabricating stories who became the joke of everybody about the underwear of Monica Lewinsky. 
it doesn't matter still Bill Clinton was a great president for them the guy the poor guy a woman 36 years ago obviously she have mental issue obviously you can tell she have a mental issue this woman you do not need to be intelligent to know to notice that she have a mental issue I mean I never heard in the world that somebody accused somebody in doing something but he don't remember even where why you cannot remember the place of a crime it is impossible to erase from the memory of a victim because the images of the place will go chase him forever you know what I mean so she remembered the crime she didn't remember the place it's impossible Nobody remember her. Nobody remember the party. Nobody even this. They said to her, we don't even know him, the guy, how he was there. And if you hear all those senators, they are talking about him as if he did it. That's it. They decide, and they are the judges. It is totally sick, and that's why I say, I'm so glad that we have those stupid people in the office. Seriously. Because, you know, it's going to be harder to fight the devil if he is a smart. I'm so glad that they are a bunch of idiots who they are stupid. You see, after what they did with this guy, there's many Americans who don't really want to vote to any party. They are going to vote for Trump, whoever in the side of Trump, because they are sick of them. By the way, uh, I have a I have a confession. Uh, Sixty years ago, I throw a snowball at a girl. I wasn't born, but it's okay. Uh, I throw a snowball at a girl, and I think that disqualify me uh, to be talking to you. I mean, imagine they have articles about him because he throw ice at somebody. What's wrong with those people? This guy, he was a judge for more than, I don't know, 30 years? Almost all his life. Nobody said anything. A judge, he's a judge, he's not a lawyer. I mean, when you are a judge, you are the, the, the high quality of the society, supposedly. So nobody ever complained about his behavior since then. Suddenly he became the devil overnight. Yeah, because simply they they did read his record. He is against abortion. He's against everything they stand for. That's 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 a dangerous for them. That's the whole story. Otherwise, he's fine. Nobody complained about him being with George Bush. Nobody complained about him working for the government for 30 years. Being a judge, sending people to jail. It's okay. And you know, if, if this is the case, I mean, we should be worried as men to go with women. I mean, if I go in the elevator, I'm going to turn my camera on, man. You never know. You might go upstairs and then the women, she say, this guy, he touched me. And I will save the, I will save the video for the coming 40 years because she might say that after 30 years. She might say, I went with a Christian prince in the elevator and he exposed something. He showed me something. What he showed you his cell phone. I mean, what this is madness. Any woman she accused any man, and that's it. Actually, this woman she should go to jail. If I am him, I will sue her back and I will do a real investigation and I will do my best to prove that he she is a fraud. Either the report from the doctors will come that she has a mental issue. Then she go to hospital, or she don't have a mental issue. Then she have to go to jail. It's not right to accuse people for no reason. And I believe strongly this woman, according to the story, they put her in trouble. She don't want even to speak about it. You see, I think this what woman, what this woman did. She spoke in front of some stupid friends, Democrat like her, and 
they take it from Starbucks and they call senators. She never thought it's going to be in public. She was just talking about, okay, this guy, you know, remember? I remember him, he did that to me one day. She thought it's just a conversation. She, she never wanted to go uh, to talk about this. And yeah, you know, there's many, they do things out of depression who they are seeking attention. Some, they get old, nobody is talking about them. They are not attention, the star, superstar no more. So they do stupid things. Uh, about two years ago, there is an actor who nobody talk about her no more because she is old now. She took naked pictures and she posted on the internet by herself. Nobody like hijack her. Why? Because she, here we go. People are talking about her. This is the point. There was when I used to open a chat room in Paltok, there was two women. One of them, her name, I think, uh, Spice, something like this. I don't know. Actually, it's a nickname. Those two women. Every two weeks, three weeks, they convert to new religion. So today they convert to Islam. Then they come to the chat of a Christian prince. And Christian prince explain about Islam and they take the mic and they decide to leave Islam. When they convert to Islam, the Muslim, they praise them. Allahu Akbar, sister. Please, brother, invite them. Brother, she says, our sister, she's a superstar. You know, she's happy. Everybody give her the mic to talk, how you feel, etc. Okay. Then... After two weeks, the Muslims, they don't praise her no more because she is an old Muslim now. She's an old, she converted already. I mean, that's it. So hello. So she go to the Christian prince, the Christians. She go to the Christians. She became a Christian again. And the Christian, hey, brothers, you know, add her, please, sister, add me, etc. She became superstar again. Then after three, four weeks, she became a Muslim again. And then she became a Christian again, and then she became a Muslim again, and she became a Christian again. So I, the last time I remember, they came to my to my chat room, and they said to me, we want to be Christians. I said, get lost. <laughs> Literally, get lost. Stupid idiots. You have mental illness, and you are just seeking attention. They don't care really for who, what religion they are about. They care only seeking attention. People, they praise them and they are stars and put light on them. As simple as that. You know, there is a, there is a story of... Uh, it's, it's, it's a joke. But it represents for me exactly how the socialists and the liberals they are. Or Democrat, whatever you call them in Europe. There was a guy, he's an Arab like me, driving in the highway. And he heard in the radio the, the news saying, attention, attention, highway 101, whatever, a crazy guy driving in the wrong direction. Attention, attention, a crazy guy driving in the wrong direction. This Arabian guy, who is like me, very good in driving, he started thinking, <laughs> How stupid this radio. He said, only one going wrong direction. Say two, say three, say four, say five, say seven, say ten, say fifteen. Fifteen people going wrong direction. Twenty, twenty-five, because it was him. He was the one driving in the wrong direction, but he was counting how many people going in the wrong direction. He heard the radio saying a crazy guy going in the wrong direction in the highway. And he was speaking to himself how stupid the radio. It's not only one. It is two. It is a three. It is four. It is 10. <laughs> it is 15. Now we are 55. Now we are 70. Now, this is how they are. They drive in the wrong way and they think everyone in the other side is wrong. 97% the percentage of Hillary Clinton to win, which means 97% are driving in the right highway direction. 
And then Hillary, she drove with her socialist in one car in the highway. And then she started counting. One, two, three for me, five. They are against you. They are in the wrong direction. They are voting against you. And then we find the opposite. Crazy, stupid, I don't know. You know, just to give you an example about those socialists, when I was in Asia, in China specifically, I met with a girl, she's from France, and the guy, I think he was from Spain. And then we start talking about Islam. You know, we went like, uh, we saw a, a restaurant, uh, you know, they eat halal. I, I told them I don't eat here. And later they asked me why. I said, I don't really eat this halal food, stupid thing. And then they told me, uh, you know, we start talking about our Arab countries and etc. you know. And then this uh, socialist woman, she said to me, look like you hate Arab. I said, why you are saying that? She said, you keep talking negative about them. I said, what if I say to you, I am an Arab myself? <laughs> she said, what? So did you notice that I have an accent? I said, yeah. I said, okay, where I'm from. So if I speak negative, about a group that's mean I hate them there is many negativity in our society in the Middle East what I can do I mean I am in America now because I'm not happy there why, why I came to USA I mean what is the reason is it for money no I'm not rich here actually there I can do a lot better a lot better so why I came here Those liberals, they have the accuser right away of hate. The second you say something they don't like. You don't like African. You know, why? How you know? How you predict that I don't like African? Because you said you don't eat chocolate. What this? You hate people of color. What? You said you like milk. But this is not true, you know. <laughs> my, I have, I met the most best people ever I met in my life. They were African. So you judge me that that I don't like African because I don't eat chocolate. This is the mentality. You don't eat chocolate. You hate African. You like milk? Here we go. You like white supremacy? You think white is better? Madness. Anything you do. Actually, you see this uh, this Muslim woman here, Sarsour. Do you know what the article here? This woman, she was a speech speaking about that white women, white women, excuse me, is behind the white women supremacy is behind electing this judge. I mean, you believe it? Excuse me. Why your husband is not an African guy? And by the way, Egyptians are African supposedly, but they are considered as white. When the last time the Muslims decide to choose an African king, uh, for sure, I'm not talking about Sudan, all of them they are black anyway. When we will see a king in Saudi Arabia, he is African. When we will see a president in Syria, he is African. When we are going to see, a, you know, you know, guys, do you know the city of Al Basra? Who knows Al Basra? Al Basra city. Give me a second, just to show you the hypocrisy of those who they are in bed with the liberals.
All right. I will try to find the map. All right, here we go. This is the city of Al-Basra. Let us zoom out so you can get an idea. Do you know what is the purpose of the city? What was the city is about? This is Baghdad. It's here in Iraq. This is Kuwait, where Saddam Hussein invaded before. This is the Persian Gulf, which is called by the Arab, the Arab Gulf. And if you go down, you will see here is Iran. This is the borders of Iran. You know. All right. So what is Al Basra? Al Basra was nothing but a slave city. Hundreds of thousands of slaves live here. Their job is to do farming as a slaves for the white Arab man. How many black are exist right now in Iraq? Zero. Okay, what happened? How? Long, long time ago, during the time, they see the Muslim, they say to you, the caliphate, the caliphate, the science, etc. The the caliphate flourish. You know, we have a great history. It's a it's a lie. Nobody owns slaves and sell slaves as much as the Muslims and the Arab. One day, one day, those poor African they decide to make a revolution against the white Muslim man. Who is capturing them all the way from Africa, bringing there, bringing them here for slavery to work for him like goats? Literally, they kill them all. You can search right now in Google, peace upon him, Prophet Google, for what it's called the Zinj revolution. Zinj. Let me see if I can find you an article about it. Give me a second. Islam is the biggest organization and the religious title who promote slavery. Here we go. This is in Wikipedia. You can search for the same article. Now, I don't trust really Wikipedia. I mean, you can search for it by yourself. Do your work. All right. Uh, this revolution, according to Wikipedia, and as I, again, as I said, uh, don't take the numbers or anything from just Wikipedia. Do your job. Search if you are interested. In the year 869, year 883, which means this is about 200 years after Muhammad. It's like in the age of Islam flourishing, taking over everywhere, practicing the real Islam. It is still in the time of the Caliphate. Those African, this African uh, territory, and I can say it's an African territory because there's no white people live there, only black, only it's a city for slave. Everybody there is a slave. The white man, he dumped them there, and he forced them to go every morning to the field to do the farming, to do etc. Whatever they are, they are need to do. After work, you go there. 
He don't bring you to his own because too many tens of thousands to the point they made an army to fight for their freedom and then they killed them all. That is the truth. In Damascus is the same, not only in Iraq. You know, uh, 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 some history books report that each caliphate he have between ten to twenty thousand women just for belly dancing, slaves. Where did where they get this women from? They don't even buy them. They attack the neighbors, neighboring countries, tribes, villages. Rob the houses, take their gold, their money, their food, their animals. Bring it to the Islamic State. Divide the shares between the, the terrorist Muslims, and they divide the women between the Muslims too. The Caliphate will take the big share. As simple as that. So somebody believe in such a garbage religion. Muhammad himself, he was a trade businessman of slave, and he owned many slaves. The Muslim they speak about the slave, his name is Bilal. They say, Do you know that the first one who called for the prayer in Islam, he was a black African? Yeah, because he was a slave, and Muhammad never freed him. Yeah, Al Basra today is still persecuted. Do you know why? Because they believe they believe that whoever believe, live there is from from like you know the, the lowest because this is the the city of the slaves you know you know what i mean but there's no black there people but whoever live there still in their mind this is the city of the slaves i you know i, I cannot really confirm such a thing about this guy but what i know for sure that bilal uh, when Muhammad he died, he still was a slave. But there is some reference that the cousin of Mary the Copt, uh, when Omar he wanted to kill him, because some they say that the kid which is Mary the uh, Mary the Copt, the slave of Muhammad, uh, when she got a bretnet, they said it is not Muhammad who made her bretnet; it was her cousin. So uh, Omar, he went there. He did not know anything about this uh, slave. Uh, he went there to kill him for doing that. And when he went there, supposedly this guy, he showed his, you know, his naked body to show him that he is, uh, he don't have one. They cut it off for him. And this is what they used to do to slaves too. You know, they cut their penises so they can live between the, in the house. And the guy, he will not be worried about his wife sleeping with the slave. Anyway, I want I want uh, uh, all of you always to download my videos. Soon I'm going to do cleaning of my page in YouTube. Most of the videos they will disappear. So if you're already interested, download them, share them with your friends, put them in your channel, and let us try to make a difference. All of us together, not one person. And don't be a slave. It doesn't matter if you are white or black. We should not allow slavery anymore. And socialism is nothing but another page of slavery history. They speak too much about human rights, but the fact they are the one who encourages slavery. And this is why they want more refugee. And they want more people to cross the borders because they want more people to be abused and used for a cheap employment. It has nothing to do with the human rights. They don't care for you as a human. It's an organization of evil. They claim that they, define, they, they, they defend even animals' rights, but yet they approve killing babies. They claim that they are a people who everybody have the right, equal right, but the right, the second you don't join them, they try to execute you. If not by executing your reputation, they try to execute your wages, your job, anything they can do. Just just don't join them and you will see what they will do to you. You know, they speak that they are Democrat. 
But when Trump he won the election, they started breaking cars, burning stores, breaking windows, attacking the street, people in the street. Go watch right now in YouTube and see what if I am lying. In case you have a short memory, where is where is the Democrat? Democrat is you accept the vote. Okay, the guy he won. What we do? We go in the street, savage. We go in the street, we burn cars, we attack stores. I mean, Trump he won. What the what the what the guy who owned the store have to do with this? Why you are what the poor guy who owned a store for a grocery store? Why you are destroying his 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 his, his front door and front window? What do you have to do with it? Actors right away they went in YouTube and they are crying. <laughs> I can't believe it. This is happened. Trump he won. <laughs> what is that? It's a madness. They have mental issue. They are suffering literally from mental issues. Obama he won. We do not go cry and we don't destroy cars and we do not burn houses. But can we do the same? We can. And you know, the funny they say that those conservatives, they are the one who like guns, but we don't use them. They are the one who use violence. Socialists, they are the one who bomb police stations. Go and read the history of the socialists. It's not us. You remember uh, McVeigh, the one who did the attack in Oklahoma? Do you know that this guy is a Muslim? They make article about the guy is a Muslim. Not only that, he converted to Islam and he rented the same apartment of the Sheikh who did the same attack before him, the blind guy, Abdurrahman. Just to confirm that he is just his student. He took the same apartment in purpose. I mean, from the whole city in Oklahoma, he could not find an apartment to rent except the apartment of the same terrorist who exploded the same building. He's a Muslim. Yeah, he's a Muslim. He's a convert. You don't talk about it. Go right now and search it. He's a Muslim convert. <laughs> but if you go and read what what the what the socialists they say about it they make him from the group of trump they make him conservative the guy is a muslim you know imagine somebody want to do terrorist group or he want to do an attack and then he take the same building a muslim he attacked before him his name is sheikh abdul rahman the blind guy and he took the same apartment so he attacked the same building that guy he attacked and he rented the same apartment that guy he rented i mean is that an uh... <laughs> you know what i mean do you think this is what like uh happened by by luck but they don't talk about it but anyway, you can search all this information is, is there. But you see, the problem is nobody want to look and people, they want to just copy paste. Like now I say that to you, you learn it, but you, you don't want to search. Search it yourself and see if it's true. Check it out. Don't take what people say to you. It doesn't matter who you are. If you are a, a, a Republican, liberal, a socialist, idiot, whatever you are, check it out. Because people lie. And people, they sometimes they carry, carry out lies. Even the good ones. So my advice for everybody: don't be emotional and don't be stupid. What I noticed in the last, you know, especially the last fifteen days, uh, how stupid the emotion is of those liberals trying to make people cry when there is no nobody die, nothing happened. They made the guy a rapist when there is no proof of that. He became a convicted criminal without without a court, without even a, anything. They asked for seven, this number seven investigation. And okay, now we have seven. They will ask for number eight, and then we do number eight, and then they will ask for number nine. The point is, we should not allow him to be in the Supreme Court. 
they have mental issues I'm truly convinced that the second you became you see like uh, when somebody he convert to Islam I ask myself why a person he live in the West who have the advantage of computer internet he can search and he can learn why he convert to Islam obviously you have a mental issue because how in the world a human being in the year 2018 or 17 or 16 or etc he can believe that there is a God he will give me endless penis and a lot of women to have sex with in the heaven unless you have a mental illness you know what I mean how I can convince myself in the year 2018 that there's a religion if I convert to it this God he will make a plastic surgery for my penis and he will increase the size of it to the point is going to become endless and this God his name is Allah and I should worship him you must be stupid there's a God who his name is Allah if you convert to his religion and pray for him five times a day you hate your neighbor you hate your mother you hear you you hear you hate anyone is not a Muslim if you do that he will give you women each time you have sex with them he will make their vagina virgin again I mean you have to be stupid to believe in this garbage literally you have to be stupid you see I do not need to debate with a Muslim for 10 hours to prove Islam to be stupid the idea of the virgins and the penises and the vagina but itself is a proof that Islam is nothing but a lie it's stupid it's a horny religion sexual religion when a prophet he say that the man in the heaven he will have an orgasm of 70 years so I go to visit Shabir Ali in his bedroom in the heaven I knock at the door Shabir Ali is he's doing having sex I don't want to I don't want to make the sound you know and then okay Shabir Ali is busy mm, mm, mm. okay okay Shabir Ali I got you I got you you are having orgasm so I go I come back after six years I come back after six years I knock at the door of Shabir Ali mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh Shabir Ali still having orgasm okay I will come back after 13 years I mean maybe 13 years would be enough I come back after 13 years Shabir Ali still having orgasm I knock at the door Shabir Ali making the same voice okay let me come back after 50 years 50 years still Shabir Ali having orgasm all right I mean what I will do I'm going to die soon I'm getting old I don't think I'm going to live forever so I come back after like 10 years and Shabir Ali is still having orgasm I mean orgasm for 70 years and you want to convince me that you have a God and you have a religion do I need really to have a debate to prove that this is a stupid cult it's a sexual cult Uh, by the way if you want the reference for what I am saying you can get my books from Amazon my last book is all about the sex of Islam sex and uh, actually the name of the book is sex and Allah you can search it on amazon.com anytime you want to get my books just type Christian Prince in amazon.com amazon.de Germany etc you know you will find the list of my books in many languages but my last book two volume it's called sex and Allah have tons 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 of reference about the garbage of Islam all of it it is official nothing of my own I am just presenting to you what this mad religion teach in their books how many of you get the book how many of you get the books sex and Allah <clears throat> if you have the books please don't forget to make uh, a review and by the way uh, in Amazon when you make a review you can post the, the review under any name you wish like you know you can call yourself Amazon customer before you post it show you a review you can change your name you can make it uh, shish kebab whatever you want so you can change the name of the person who is posting the review as you wish you know so nobody will know your name <clears throat> so don't forget please if you get my books to make a review and be honest if you like them or not you know uh, very stupid very crazy sometimes me myself when i read them i don't believe them. i mean this is this is really crazy you know like you enter a river when you enter paradise 
what is the first thing we have in paradise anyone remember I mean just just to show you how amazing I don't know why you can't get my yet my, my friend go go to Amazon you can get it you can get it they will ship it to you uh, what the first thing you want to enter heaven in Islam you have to drink from two kind of water the first one anyone remember what the first one would do two water two spring of water what those water would do who remember this is how convincing Islam is no it's not about the, uh, the wine no no one water will make you young as Jesus in the age of 33 and will make you tall as Adam which is not 90 90 cubit the second water will make you white like snow because no black is allowed to enter the heaven of Allah this is how disgusting so before you enter the heaven Allah will change your nature by making you drink from the fountain of youth the fountain of youth well you want the hadith you said you have my book don't you have my books if you have my books you will not need it I mean it's there the fountain of youth is part of this of this of, of the stupidity and the teaching of Muhammad which is nothing but a legion you know actually in the movie it's called the Caribbean um, let me try to find the hadith here hold on about the fountain of youth <clears throat> All right. I mean, I'm sure many of you will convert to Islam right away after you hear about, after you read about the fountain of youth. Where is this one? Uh, here, where Musa says he he kicked the ass of the angel. Yeah, here here the story where Musa says he kicked the ass of the angel and he broke his wing, and he took his eyesight off. His eye came out. And then the angel he went back to Allah and Allah he restored his eye in the proper place <laughs> but anyway this is not the height we are looking for you know this Musa he play karate I mean he's a Jew what do you expect an angel of death is coming to a Jew to try and to take his life I mean can you can you do that to the Jew no you cannot do that so the Jew guy Musa he kicked the ass he played karate Musa's, you know, kung fu, ching pong, he ha, bing. The, the eye of the angel is coming out, and then the angel he came back to Allah and he said to him, uh, uh, Allah, he said, what's wrong with you, angel? What happened? Uh, what happened to your eye? Why your eye is out? Your your eye? What happened to your eye? Your eye is coming down with with the rasur. Uh, uh, this Musa's, you send me to Musa's, he kicked my ass. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this is not the hate we are looking for. It's kind of funny, but it's convincing, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm trying to find. Here we go. All right, the fountain of youth, and you know, you might think you are you are you are watching the Caribbean, uh, the part of the Caribbean movie. You know, it's not I mean, Muhammad. And by the way, this is coming from old legions, which is spread in uh, in in the, in the Babylon and Assyrian land and in Persia about 
uh, Jill Jamish, you know, Jill Jamish, if you know the story. And there is like this guy, he uh, he wanted to find a youth, the, the, the fountain of youth where he can live forever. All right. Now here you see where Musa is uh, advised by Allah to carry a fish which is dead, put it in the basket. And supposedly this fish, when touch the water, the fountain of youth, they will know that this is the place they are looking for. Uh, but let us see. Hmm. Where is the story? You see here, yeah, it's here, it should be here, and I'm trying to find. Here we go, here we go. Okay. And at the rock, there was a water spring called Al Hayat. What is the name of the spring? Al Hayat. You know what Hayat mean? The, 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 the spring of life, the fountain of life. Whoever drink from it or even touch it, read, and none come in touch with it, it's water, but become alive. Do you see it? Welcome to Islam, my friend. I mean, you see, Islam is very convincing. Don't tell me Islam is not convincing. So there is a water just by touching the water, you will be alive. Actually, I will tell you this story, true story. I was dead. Yes, I was dead. And then I uh, I was a zombie. <laughs> zombie, zombie. And then one day I went and uh, I found the fountain, uh, you know, and then I touched the water and then I became alive. And uh, welcome to Islam. <laughs> And you know, the, the Muhammad want to explain in his fairy tale how the fish of Musa has come back to life. I mean, pfft, he took a fish with him. Allah told him to take a fish with you. Okay. And when the fish move from the basket, you will know that this is where Al Khudr is located. Al Khudr is the prophet of Allah who is going to teach Musa's. Even the name of Al Khudr. Do you remember, guys, what Al Khudr mean? Do you remember what uh, the word Al Khudr mean? Who remember? What Al Khadr? Al Khadr. Remember the story here, all of it is about Al Khadr. The green. Okay, why he is called the green? You know, look in the front of you and you will know why. Why he is called the green? Why they call him a green, Prophet Green? This is not his last name. His name is a green because he lived where the water of fountain of life and he touched it. So this guy, wherever he go, even if he sit in the grass which is a dry and dead, the second he touch it, the grass will become a green. That's it. Anything he touch will become a green or youth or come back to life. So they called him Al Khadr, which is coming from an old legion about this guy. This guy, he have a different name in the Aramaic language, close to green, and Muhammad is taking the story from there. Actually, the reason there's an island is called the Greenland because Al Khadr he uh, he changed his airplane there. 
he stopped there for five minutes. I mean, isn't it Islam convincing for you? Do I need to give you more proof that Islam is coming from God? It's obvious. Hmm? I'm sure many women now, they will try to touch Mr. Green or to touch this uh, fountain. Hey, uh, uh, what if I, who want to buy some water from me, from the ladies? Who want to get young again? Go on. <laughs> I mean, the story is amazing. Actually, if you read the whole story here, it's the most funny, stupid story ever. And how a human being, he can believe in such a garbage. And, you know, and this is why, by the way, Muslims, they hate, uh, they don't like to debate me because a Muslim, when he speaks to me, he cannot, he doesn't know what he's going to expect. This is the problem. You see, when you debate someone, he have a limited knowledge in Islam. You know exactly what he will talk about. A few things he knew, and that's it. He will repeat them. But when he talked to me, it doesn't matter where he go. I'm going to squeeze him, and I will make him sorry. And all of you are witness for that. It doesn't matter really what they want to talk about. Talk about anything, anything. Just call me. It doesn't matter. Wherever you go, I will go with you. Islam is a joke. And tomorrow, actually, we have a live broadcast. Actually, I wasn't scheduling to do a broadcast today, but I said to myself, I was working in my roof. I'm, I'm unbelievable, this roof. I thought it's a small project. I opened the, you know, like the, the, the roof, and then I found there is some many damaged wood and big project became. And the poor me, I have to fix it all by myself. So uh, this is why I wasn't planning really to do today any. But the rain started, and then I have to stop. I mean, what I can do. The green is the, it's not about the Arab, my friend. Listen, when you are a person who live in a desert, the green is your favorite. When you are a person who live in Alaska, desert is a very beautiful for you. You know what I mean? Are you getting the point? Uh, for us, Middle Eastern, we have a lot of sun. So sun is not really a good thing for us. We don't go out in the sun. You go in different countries, they pay money to go in the sun. They pay money to change the color of their skin. In the Middle East, everybody want to get whiter. I'm serious. Women who is getting little tan in her skin, nobody will marry her. Any everybody want to marry a white woman? You can ask any Arab guy. I'm not. I'm not making things up. If they want to speak about the women, she should. You should marry right away. They will say to you, she's very white, which means like, yeah, yummy. So, this is why if you go in the Quran, this is why the Quran exposed itself the mentality of an Arab man. This is not God talking. Hmm? What the Quran promise? What does what do with you? What does that mean? The Muslim in the translation, they try to fool you and they say to you, in that day, Allah will make faces black and white. And they say, look at the translation, chapter 3, verse 106. Okay. On the day when some faces will light will be light up white it doesn't say light up it says will be white and some faces will be black as simple as that okay what we just mentioned to you that when you go to heaven there's two fountain of water one will make you white literally and you can go and read the interpretation like a theor you will see that this is what it says and actually in, if you go to the chapter of uh, uh where is speaking uh a jassasa, which is a beast, will come down. Uh, this is jassasa. <clears throat> it's going to come from the ground, and it's going to 
come with the stick of Musa's and the the uh, the ring of Solomon. Uh, let us see where we can find. <clears throat> Uh, when when the when the when the beast will come is going to in chapter 27 verse number 82 this beast will come from the ground and is going to have the stick of Moses and is going to have the staff sorry the, the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon you can go right now to make a theory and you can read it so this beast is going to hit you with your face by the ring of cinnamon. Some story says if when you hit you by the ring, you will turn black. And when you hit you by the staff of Moses, you will turn white. Some, they say the opposite. doesn't matter. So this beast will come only from the ground, and he is going to make you either white or black based on your religion. So if you are a Christian prince like me, you will turn to be black if you are going if you are a person who is like osama bin laden allah will make you white like snow all right and you can go you know if we go to tafsir you see we never we never say things without proof i mean everything i say always we get a proof for it and this is why what we do is very important because we don't make speeches, you know, we prove what we say. When you have knowledge, my friend, your knowledge speak for itself, right? <clears throat> you do not need a degree to show knowledge talk. So this is the beast. This is the beast which will emerge at the end of the time when mankind has become corrupt and neglected the command of Allah and the change true religion okay and then you can read the rest of here but then you will see more details <clears throat> here we go and the beast will emerge from the earth and with it will be the staff of Musa and the ring of Solomon the Muslim believe that Allah he gave Sulaiman a ring the same as the one you saw in the ring of the movie the, the what is it called the Lord of the ring the Lord of the ring right here we go it's there the same ring fighting over it and this ring the second you wear it you can control the whole world the genie is the demon there's no demon actually in Islam a genie a, a genie is a shaitan uh, all all power even nature even weather you can control everything even the fish you can make them dance for you and actually, I used to have a ring like this, but I lost it. I was cleaning my the sink in the disposal machine. Mm -hmm. True story. So here, this beast will come, and he will have two power, not only one. The power of Suleiman ring and the power of Musa's staff. You see, the Muslim, they believe in the magic. The staff of Musa's in the Bible is mentioned that his, his magic overcome their magic, but this is how they saw it. Otherwise, Musa did not do a magic. It was a miracle. So the Muslim believe in that story as a mag as Musa was a magician. He do magic. He have a magical stick. So this beast, he will come with the magical stick of Musa, and he will come with the ring of Suleiman. <coughs> and then he it will strike the beast will strike the nose of the disbeliever. And this is why actually, by the way, in the judgment day, I'm going to cut my nose. This way, this beast he will be like what? This guy have no nose. Like what? How, what? Where I'm going to hit him? He don't have a nose. You know, you know what I mean? So he will strike your nose. But if you don't have a nose, what he can do? Nothing. Okay. So he will strike your nose. This this believer like me with the staff. You see here the story is the same. The staff, and it will make his face of the believer bright with the ring. All right. Then if you go down, you will see here the story. Uh, more details about description of the beast. Uh, it was also recorded Ibn Mujahid, etc. Jurais reported. Uh, describe, describe the beast. He said its head like the head of a bull, 
its eyes like the eyes of a pig its ears like the ears of an elephant it's a it's horn like the horn of a stag its neck like the neck of an ostrich its chest like a chest of a lion its color like the color of a tiger its hunches as like like the hunches of a, a cat its tail like the tail of a ram i mean shish kebab okay now if you go down here you will see it's giving us more details about the color they will be after it's going to hit you with the with the uh, with the staff and you turn black it says here you uh, there will be no believer left without making a white spot in his face which will spread until his face is shining white which means that the the showing of your body all of you you will become white so all the believers after they hit you with the ring of cinnamon as a Muslim you will become white totally white even if you are coming from Africa then as a result and then there is we will be no disbeliever left without making a black spot in his face which will appear a spirit until his face is a black as a result so all of us we will become black and finally i got my dream to come true i will become a black and girls will like me thank you allah thank you allah thank you finally i will find a girlfriend Unbelievable. <laughs> what a stupid religion. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, I mean, uh, do I need to debate Islam to prove to you Islam is stupid? I mean, you have to be a stupid donkey to believe in this garbage. You have to be officially a donkey or in the best scenario, educated mule. Who in the world can believe in this garbage? How you can believe in this garbage? I would say I'm serious. You have to be really mentally ill to believe in this garbage. And that's why I say, you know, those liberals who they stand side by side with those who believe in this garbage, believe in killing, terrorism, beating women, uh, uh, etc you have to be mentally ill and then we find a Muslim woman is teaching the liberals how to march against Trump sick sick and stupid anyway guys it's getting late here it is uh, 11 20 p.m. in my time so it's time for me to go I want to say thank you for being here tomorrow we will be together again and the topic is going to be about the secrets of Islam and all of it it is here in my head not in the library you know in my head so be with us tomorrow all right join us uh, invite your friends subscribe tell them about what we do and don't forget please you can subscribe to my page in uh, Patreon because this is where I announced that I'm going to be uh, Facebook right now I cannot post I have two Facebook pages and today uh, Facebook they give me a warning I'm blocked <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say to you, it's good if you subscribe in minds.com, my address in minds. You will see it on screen. Let me put it for you. Minds.com and uh, patreon.com. Uh, so in case, you know, something happened, you always you will be able to, because you might lose even your YouTube anytime. You never know. I mean, each time I have like uh, uh, 15, 20,000 subscribers, I lose the page. It's normal. I mean, I'm, I will not be even upset. Who care? It doesn't matter where I go. People still, they will come and listen and they will find me. Uh, the devil, he try always to make you disappointed and to make you feel down. That's not my case. Actually, the more the devil fight me, the more I am excited to fight back. So it will never happen. Not with me. I'm not the person who will change because the weather change. Today is sunny tomorrow it's not that is not the case you know we have a confidence about what we do I am a believer and if the Lord with me who could be against me and I am very grateful for the Lord to give me the opportunity to know what I know and to be able to share what I am sharing you see one day when I decide to do what I am doing right now I wasn't um, I mean 
it did not make me hesitate to do what I'm doing because I'm, my English is not really good enough. Like now is a lot better than before for sure, but it was really horrible. Still, I did not even care. The Lord, He will help me to make my message reach out to people and people will come and they will listen. And sometimes you say to yourself, what a person can do, what man, one man can do. You are wrong, my friend. If you see how many people listen to me from around the world, from Indonesia especially, second country listen to me from abroad, out of America, is Indonesia, the biggest Islamic country in the world. So, and they love really what I do. You know, I receive phone calls from Nigeria, from everywhere. So, you might think you are not doing much, but you can change a lot. People learn, and then instead of having one Christian prince, we will have many, and maybe even better. Share the truth, and be confident that somebody is going to learn. I don't care really if there's 200 people listening to me, or even there's five or even 10. And even if there's nobody, still I will do the broadcast. It's going to be in the internet. One day, somebody will stop by. It doesn't matter. You do what you need to do. You don't say nobody is going to listen. That is not what Jesus did. Jesus in his time, he have only 12. 12, not 12,000. So I can say I'm a lot more lucky. You know, there's a lot more than he got to listen to. I can speak to people who around the earth. So why I want to give up and why I want to say I'm not doing good? Thanks to God, we are doing a great. A lot of Muslims leave in Islam. A lot of Muslims learning things they never heard before. Muslims are victims and they need our help. Same as the Christians too, they are victims too. Because many Christians, they are naive. They've been taught wrong information about Islam. As an example, you go to church and they say to you, Muhammad is from Ishmael. That's false. That's, that's absolutely false. You go to church, somebody will say to you that the God of the Muslim is the same as the God of Abraham. They are lying to you. They are fooling you. That's not true. If a cult uses the same names you believe in, doesn't mean he is the same religion or the same belief. That's very dangerous. Don't be a foolish person and don't let them drive you like a toy with remote control. We share nothing with the Muslims. The Muslims, they believe in the Virgin Mary, so what? I mean, that's Muhammad. He used the name Mary because he needed the name. He used the name of Isa because he needed the name. He used the name of, of, of Musa because he needed the name. It's not the opposite. It's not because he believed in them. It's because he needed them. You see, when you are a scam, when you are a scam, in order to scam somebody, you have to make him trust you. Do we agree? You, we have to establish a trust. Otherwise, this guy, he will not give me his bank account. He will not open his door for me. Correct? He will not open my email. So in order to hack his computer, in order to scam him, in order to take his credit card, in order to, to get inside his house, I, I have to make him to believe, like, I am the cable guy. So I, I come to you wearing a uniform. So you trust the uniform. Muhammad, he knew that very well. He knew in order to scam you, he have to provide you some good names, which you trust. So I will use the name of Jesus because those Christians believe in Jesus. And I will use the name of Musa because those Jews who they are next door to me, they believe in Musa. I will use the names they use so they can trust me. Consider me. If I came to them with different names, they would not listen. When somebody want to put poison for you, he will not put it in the bathroom. He will put it in the best dish you eat. Are you getting my point? So don't fool yourself and say, well, if Muhammad is from the devil, how come he says Mary is virgin? The devil is so smart, my friend. It's the same as a child molester who work as a priest. That is the devil. Imagine he is a child molester. Why he chose the job of a priest? You know what I'm saying? 
why in the world somebody is a child molester he want to work as a priest for he is the devil he want your trust so you will send his child to him and then he will molest your child and then you will lose your faith you and your child you will hate the church you will hate Christ you will say what kind of believers believe what kind of evil people are those people he want to hurt Jesus by hurting your child Be aware, my friend. Don't trust a uniform. Don't trust Christian prince because he his name is a Christian prince. Maybe he is no prince and no Christian. Maybe. He said, from their fruits you shall know them, not from their names. In order to know what is right for you, judge the fruits. The Messiah is the source of wisdom and man speak foolishness man is corrupt you see they say that women are emotional and I love yes women are emotional but who said men are not a woman with short skirt will make ten men go dizzy in a second So they say women she is not qualified to be something but yet men who lose their mind for a short skirt and nice legs are qualified the mind of a human being is easy to corrupt am i saying something not true guys am i saying something not right isn't this is the fact it's the fact they always they say like Islam teach always that women are stupid, women are half a brain. We don't want to do the same, and even there is many they believe in the same thing, but they are they are not Muslims. But the fact is, the man has half a half a brain. Let let a beautiful woman wearing short skirt and she have nice body, walk between a bunch of guys, and you will see they they start hitting the floor, hitting the hitting in a. The, the, the driving will go wrong. The one who's sitting in the Starbucks, he will start looking upside down. W what happened? It's just a woman walk by. Is it her fault? No. Man, you know, don't trust a man and don't trust a woman. For all of us, we are sinners and we can be corrupt in a second. Always, always, there is one name will never make you disappointed. That is the name of the Messiah. Don't ever trust a man or a woman. I'm not saying don't trust your friends. I'm not, but the trust here have to be limited. You know what I mean? We have a trust, but have to be limited. I don't trust a man on my salvation. I don't trust a man in what is right and what is wrong. I trust the Lord. He is my guidance and he is my wisdom. Otherwise, the Bible even say, listen to them, but don't do what they do. Because they say something, they do something. They speak good. All priests, they speak good, but they do the opposite. Not all of them for sure, but I'm saying many. So we don't go by speeches. Many, they speak good, but they are evil. And a person who is naive, he will say, okay, in the Quran it says, give it charity. What is charity? Steal money from the poor Christians and giving it to the poor Muslim that it's charity? That's not charity, it's a theft. That's a gang behavior. Or stealing the money from the Christians and giving it to Muhammad so he can have the fifth from every attack. What is the charity? So don't fool yourself by certain words. He said, I would do charity. Uh, we have a we have an angry Abdul here. I don't know why he's angry. But anyway, take it easy, my friend. Relax. Some camera you're in, you will be fine. But don't forget to brush your teeth before you drink the camera you're in. Because according to the scientific discovery of a Japanese scientist his name Yama I do drink camel urine Yama he's from Japan he said if you don't do it in the right way it might really destroy your kidney so be sure that you are doing it right
Take it easy. Always, always think about the fruits. Before you see the tree, try to find the fruits. There's a huge trees have no fruits. And what the benefit of them? Especially if it's a fruit tree. You know, the only benefit then is the wood. And you know where the wood will end? In the fire. So I want to say anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. And until we see you tomorrow again, um, and the video is already there. I mean, uh, the title is already there. So just be there tomorrow. Invite your friends, tell everybody. And until then, we will see. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. And Islam is false. I mean to that. And see you soon again. Bye-bye. Take care.